This can't become a fishing expedition like the Democrats would like to see it be. Look, I, I think you have to go back to the very beginning of day one of when President Trump nominated Judge Brett Kavanaugh. From that very first moment before any of these allegations that had even been brought up, Democrats said they were not going to support him, they weren't going to vote for him, and they were going to do everything within their power to fight him. We've seen that play out over the last couple of months. They've been absolutely disgraceful in the way that they've handled this process, in the way that they've exploited both Brett Kavanaugh and Dr. Ford. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders is denying the White House is limiting the scope of the background check investigation into Brett Kavanaugh and doubling down on the party line that Democrats are exploiting both Kavanaugh and Dr. Ford. Back with me, Michelle Bernard, Jason Johnson, Tiffany Cross. Oh, let's do a lightning round here. Let's start with Senator Maisie Hirano, uh, who was on the Sunday shows earlier this morning, on whether the FBI investigation will be credible if it's limited in scope. This is from ABC earlier. I would think that uh, Jeff Flake and the other senators who are going for this investigation will call for. There's time, you know. The thing is that every Senate vote matters, and there's there's time to get to the bottom of it. Even if it's seven days, that's bad enough. But then to limit the FBI as to the scope and who they're going to question, that uh, that really. Uh, uh, I wanted to use the word force, but uh, that's not the kind of investigation that all of us are uh, expecting the FBI to conduct. Michelle Bernard, is this beginning to look like it might just be a, a farce in order to get Republicans an excuse to vote for Kavanaugh? Absolutely, it looks like a complete farce. If you're going to have an investigation, a, a, a real investigation, at a minimum, they have to interview Mark Judge. They have to interview the three other women who have made allegations against uh, against Judge Kavanaugh. They have to talk to people to find out if there is a pattern and practice on, on, on the judge's behalf of lying on small things as well as big things, as, uh, you know, problems with alcohol, the possibility that he blacked out and doesn't actually remember what may or may not have happened. You cannot limit the test the scope of the investigation because if you do, there's no reason for the one week delay. Yeah. It would be an absolute farce and I am hoping that if they really limit the scope of the investigation that Jeff Flake will step up to the plate and vote no on Kavanaugh. We shall see. Let's go to Lindsey Graham talk about Kavanaugh's drinking uh, also on ABC. He's not a stumbling, bumbling drunk. I don't believe that you could have accomplished what he's accomplished to have been a serial rapist in high school. But the Devil's Triangle is not what people said on the internet. It is a drinking game. I think he's highly qualified. I think he's a capable man. I think he was uh, his life was was ruined here. All right, Jason Johnson, I'm going to give this to you with the, with the caveat that one can be quite successful and have a history of doing things in a sexual vein that are wrong. But hashtag Bill Cosby, but go for it. Right. So this is this is what makes all of this so disingenuous. The question is not whether or not Brett Kavanaugh was in a devil's triangle or whether Republican interns tried to change the Wikipedia entry or whether he was boofing or whether it, that's actually not the question. The question is, number one, did he sexually assault someone in 1982? And two, did he engage in a lifetime of behavior into possibly his 20s of harassment and abuse and mistreatment of women that manifests itself in how he will operate as a judge? So the Republicans want to focus on this particular night or limit the scope this that, the other that doesn't really matter but if you're somebody who has a lifetime of abuse maybe you shouldn't be on the court making fundamental decisions about women's lives yeah let's go to let's go to kellyanne conway um and and this was this was um something similar happened on our show yesterday with carrie sheffield um where kellyanne conway got emotional she talked about her own um status as a victim or a survivor of sexual assault uh and this was from cnn earlier today what you saw the other day is a Senate Judiciary confirmation hearing. It is not a criminal or civil proceeding. And let me just say also, it's not a meeting of the Me Too movement. I feel very empathetic, frankly, for victims of sexual assault and sexual harassment and rape. That... <clears throat> I'm a victim of sexual assault. I don't expect Judge Kavanaugh or Jake Tapper or Jeff Flake or, or anybody to be held responsible for that. And, you know, it was a very emotional moment, Tiffany, for her. But at the same time, I, I'm not sure that, I don't know, the argument she's making is that essentially that the Democrats on the committee are trying to hold Brett Kavanaugh responsible for all of the sexual assault and rape that has happened everywhere. 
Yeah, so the thing that all of these people have in common, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who has zero credibility with the American people, um, Senator Lindsey Graham, whose uh, performance this week was an audition for the position of Attorney General for the President of the United States, and now you have Kellyanne Conway um, trying to conflate issues um, that really aren't relevant. I think, you know, listen, any woman who's been um, a victim, who has survived it, obviously my heart goes out to them. I applaud them, and I extend that to Carrie Sheffield as well. I watched um, her bravely tell her truth yesterday. The challenge is... Kellyanne Conway is actively defending a man who has 15 accusers himself who have said that he sexually assaulted them. So I don't know how you coexist with, with those two uh, conflict, conflicting ideologies. So I, I just, I don't buy it. And the fact that they're trying to, um, you know, very carefully and strategically make the narrative that the Democrats are out, um, you know, trying to make Brett Kavanaugh the face of this movement, I, I just think that argument is going to fall flat. This is somebody who has active accusers, three that we know of right now. Now, right. actively accused, incredibly accusing him of sexually assaulting him. That's what's at issue here. And the biggest question that people need to understand is, does this man deserve to sit on the Supreme Court? Like you yeah. pointed out very uh, well yesterday, Joy, his liberty is not at stake here. This is not a question of, does he deserve to spend his life in prison? The question is, does he deserve to sit on the highest court of the land? And after we saw his belligerent performance that was extremely partisan, I don't understand how you can call yourself a patriot, even though you may watch Fox News all day and have a confederate flag in, in your pickup truck and, and beat your chest about how much you love this country, stand up for this country and show patriotism and show, no, that is not the way the highest court of the land functions. You cannot allow this person to serve on the Supreme Court when there are still questions about uh, his sobriety, his truthfulness, and his ability to operate as a jurist in a bipartisan way. Yeah. Um, let's, uh, look, before, I'm going to let you in, Jason, but I want to really quickly play, uh, there's a the joint interview that Jeff Flake and, and Chris Coons did with 60 Minutes talking about Kavanaugh's behavior in Thursday's hearing. I want to play real quick, and then Jason, I'll come to you. I have to say 